It's now a lot easier to transform objects with the free transform tool. Let's take the example of a tree. I'm going to duplicate the leaves a few times. And the issue before is that you could only scale towards one of the corner, one of the anchors of the free transform tool. Now, if you keep the alt key down, you can transform around the transform widgets pivot. So you can move the pivot anywhere you'd like and then hold the Alt key down to transform non-uniformly around it. Uh, you can also use the Shift key to constrain the transform to maintain the selection's ratio like before. So now the rotation and the scale both work in a similar way. You can use it on a single axis as well, be it the horizontal or vertical one. Again, you'll have to use the Alt key. Here's another feature that was added in the last version. With the Outline Selection tool, you can now alternate between the Outline and Polygonal Selection modes. To do that, you start your selection like usual, and you'll want to hold the Control key down. When you release, you will have this Polygonal Lasso tool that pops up. Release Control to keep doing your Outline Selection. It's quite handy for some sections where you really want sharp edges, like on this golem style character. You can use it to select parts and then paint a bit of texture inside of it. The drill might seem a bit strange at first, but remember, you just have to keep the control key down. Once you release the control key and the mouse, you will confirm your selection and you can paint inside of it. It's very useful when you want to add textures, yet sharp shadows inside of a texture like this one. Another improvement in that area is whenever you have a selection, you can click once anywhere to deselect it. You don't have to press Ctrl Shift A or Ctrl D in my case to do that. There are now shortcut entries to toggle the layer state on and off. So you have the visibility for one. You can lock and unlock the layer and modify its alpha channel as well. This is extremely handy because you already have some shortcuts to navigate the layer stack. By default, it's with the page up and down keys and I've modified them to fit that of Photoshop. You can now modify the state with a keyboard shortcut and do that on all selected layers at the same time. Now when you are hovering a group, you don't have to jump back to the mouse. You can stay on the keyboard and toggle its visibility on and off. You will have to set your own shortcuts because you just have the entries and they are empty by default. There are seven new default presets. They are a bit hard to find at first because they follow the design of existing brushes, but two are called block textured and they are very, very nice. Let me hide that. Especially this one, I love it. Uh, it has a very particular texture and feel to it. There are a few brushes called oils as well. You have two palette knives that smear paint around and that are of a very good quality that give you a really nice feel. I just wish they had pen rotation enabled by default. Uh, it's not something most people use, but if you have an art brush pen, it's really wonderful. These new presets are of a fairly high quality, so check them out. There's a new smart patch tool. It looks like a bandage and you can use it to patch areas of your photographs or paintings. It will try to find pixels to replace artifacts you have on a character's skin or details that stand out of the composition. It comes with an accuracy slider so you can change how fast or how slow the algorithm works and how high the quality is. It's going to be a nice addition in the future. Rita comes with a new file save dialog. It's now better at remembering where you last saved the document and where you might want to save the new picture. Since a few versions, you have audio support in the animation editor. So you can now load an audio file and animate to it. As you scrub, you will get fragments of the audio played back. The demo in the background is from Timothée Gier, and you can find the link to the docs in the video description. From this version onwards, Krita integrates the Jimacute plugin. This means that the program will always stay up to date with the filter library. 
The interface looks quite similar. The thing is you have all the latest filters available, including this one, which is super useful that David Revoir uses in his webcomic, which automatically detects edges and fills in the space with colors so you can quickly then colorize your game sprites.